It was a typical Monday morning here in the HR department. I was just sitting down to my first steaming sip of hot coffee, easing into the emails, when suddenly, urgent, flashed across my screen. What could be so urgent on a Monday morning? Dear Ms. Lipton, your employee, Joe Jones, was rushed to the hospital Friday afternoon as a result of his biometric blood tests. Blood pressure, off the charts. Cholesterol, off the charts. Blood glucose, off the charts. We are keeping him in for observation. How could this have happened? We have a wellness program. We offer aerobics, nutrition counseling. We even offer mindful meditation. Didn't Joe go to any of those classes? Does this scenario sound familiar? Are you having poor attendance in your wellness programs? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. How to get your employees engaged in wellness. I'd like to start with a story about a company called Limeade, based in Seattle. Limeade did something unique by setting up a health and wellness council. They invited people from every department in the company to come and serve on the council. And by doing this, they began to plant the seeds and create a web of wellness. Once they accumulated their people, the council set up a survey. Not just your typical, how do you like Zumba on a scale of one to five, but what are your unique challenges, issues, and needs from wellness? Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to quit smoking? Are you worried about money? Do you need stress management? or financial consulting. What are your needs? What are your unique needs? What time of day works for you? Poor Joe Jones over here works graveyard, so he can't come to a noontime lunch and learn. So the scheduling is critical. Once they tabulated the results, then they went about creating a wellness program. And yes, they offered nutrition and a lot of the standard offerings, but they went above and beyond. They know they need to make wellness fun. So they offered family volleyball, bowling activities, things that are fun, not just let's do aerobics. They engaged people in the company who wanted to offer something. For example, someone in the company likes to do healthy Indian meals. So they invited her to do a lunch and learn healthy Indian meals. Increasing the web of wellness throughout the company. Now one of the key tools that makes this program successful is communication, of course. How can you get people to come if they don't know what's happening? And everybody's busy. They don't remember what's happening Monday at noon, Friday at noon, on the last, the week before. So they created a special area of the intranet devoted just to the Wellness Council with a Facebook type user interface. So everyone can post their happy pictures at the events, people can make suggestions, people can invite their friends to informal wellness activities. Like, let's all go for a bike ride Saturday. We're meeting at 8 a.m. at Pier 39, whatever. Increasing the web of wellness throughout the company. Another important tool, of course, is support. People who are trying to make drastic changes in their life, like losing weight and quitting smoking, need help. It's not so simple to have someone come in once a week and talk about losing weight. People need to go out and live their lives while they're conscious of what they're eating, of course. 
So they help each other. They have their own private area, closed area on the internet where they can ask each other for help. Like what happens when you go to a Christmas party and there's a lot of unhealthy food? What am I going to do? And then that way they can support one another. And so by creating this web of wellness and letting it grow, this company, Limeade, has created a very strong and vibrant health and wellness program. And I'd like to close with this short quote by Marianne Williamson, author of Return to Love and many other books. We can't just sit back, neglect our health, and wait for disease to come to us. We have to cultivate a culture of health for ourselves. And I would take it one step further to say that we as wellness professionals are responsible to help our people become healthy and happy. Because healthy and happy people come to work, healthy and happy people are productive at work, and healthy and happy people spread the happiness around. Thank you.